What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are here finally for some F1 22 action. And uh, this is going to be an interesting one here because we decided to do the hardest challenge on the game. And that is running around Monaco with full simulation damage. So we're going to try to survive a 25% race, which is about 20 laps around this famous historic track. But again, we're going to have the car damaged all the way cranked up to simulation. And I'm just crossing my fingers that we can even just make it past uh, the first lap. So we're going to hop right into it right now. Let David Crofty just do his thing. We're here to kick off today's race at the infamous Circuit de Monaco. Drivers will need to be on their top form if they want to take home that coveted win today. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long Circuit de Monaco. The cars will climb around 40 meters up the hill, past the casino, and then descend towards the harbor through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of 19 corners. And don't expect to see much overtaking here today. Well, hopefully Crossy's a bit wrong about that because we're gonna be starting off in dead last for this challenge. And we're gonna be driving the Aston Martin uh, as Sebastian Vettel and we're just gonna get our formation lap in and hopefully hopefully we can do all right here as we start warming up the tires here and almost immediately just make contact with the wall so if that is foreshadowing some bad things to come up then yeah then it's gonna be a very very interesting challenge so we get back to the grid we wait for the five red lights four five and lights out and away we go as we get a decent start here we start off right behind lando norris and daniel ricardo heading into turn number one we break where we need to but just break a bit too late oh no Alrighty, as we attempt this challenge for the second time we decided to switch out the aston martin for the ferrari and as we get the five red lights they go off and away we go as we get a terrible start here just could not get trashed into the rear but as we head into the center of all we break as early as we can so that we avoid making the same mistake that we did the race prior and luckily Latifi and Stroll are going to be very very happy that we didn't run into the back of them and we continue on here on lap number one as we make it to the top of the hill and off of casino so heading into turn number five we go into the inside of Latifi as there's starting to be a little bit of traffic jam I'm expecting to it be a bit worse as we now make our way to the hairpin for the first time going a cool 50 kilometers per hour we're just stuck on the outside of Albon as he uh, tried squeezing us into the wall but didn't work out too pleasantly for him as we are able to stay onto the inside get a good drive into the tunnel and we are able to gain another position now and uh, find ourselves up into P18 so not too bad of a start. We were able to go from P20 to P18 and actually gain another position here as we make our way into lap number two. Uh, I believe it was a Haas that had a little bit of damage, had to come into the pits, making a schedule uh, pit stop. But due to that, we were able to now work our way up into P17, gain that free position. And now we're going to focus on trying to catch up to Stroll here and see if we can force him into a mistake or if not, get an overtake on him done. Maybe into set evolve, maybe into turn five. Maybe into the hairpin. I don't know. Just have to see what happens here. But we're just following him now. Uh, seeing if we can stay with him. Because as you can see on the top left. Everybody's got uh, different strategies going on here. As Xiao Guan Yu and Stroll are both using the soft compound tires. We're on the medium. We elected to go with the harder compound tire for the beginning. And then switch off to the soft compound. As uh, I feel like we're going to have a lot of pace uh, with this car. Since we are driving Ferrari, it's probably one of the better cars on the field. So I think if we could just stay with these guys up ahead, we can be very, very competitive. And if we could just stay on them, maybe force them into a mistake or just have them you know, use up their tire and degrade them early, we can hopefully take full advantage once it comes down to about lap five or six and try to see if we can make some time up on them, go for some overtakes. And I think we should be all right here as we uh, now make our way off of La Rascas. And lead our way now into lap number four. So nothing really happened from lap number four to lap number six. We just kind of followed Stroll here. And just were waiting patiently for his tires to wear out. And on this lap here, patience is finally 
going in our favor as we work our way up into lap number seven. And you can see we are now all over the rear of Strollers. We're just pressuring him here and seeing if we can get into a mistake. But heading into turn number five, he outbreaks himself, goes a bit wide. We sneak it onto the inside and heading into the hairpin. We're able to complete the overtake. And now we find our way up into P16 after just seven laps here. And uh, that is, in my opinion, really, really good because it's just so difficult to overtake here at Monaco. And not only that, we have these guys pushed up to uh, 94 experience. So it's very, very quick, this race. And we have to be on top of our toes and just be as aggressive as we can if we want to make some overtakes. But as we now work our way onto lap number eight, some of these guys are ahead of us came into the pits. As you can see, we're able to come out right ahead of Hamilton. That's going to be very, very key here because Hamilton is going to be one of the quicker cars up, uh, you know, that we have to go against. And not only that, if we can hold him up here, possibly, just possibly, we can uh, force him to get overtaken or get put into a, a position where he makes a mistake. And maybe we can get around him once we come into our pits and uh, maybe catch up to him. But who knows? It's a very, very long race. I know it's only 20 laps, but... 20 laps around Monaco feels like 100 laps around, you know, like Austria or something like that because it's just so mentally draining, so physically tough. You just have to be on top of your toes for every single second that you go around this track. And luckily, here on lap number 11, as our tires are starting to wear out here, we have not yet made any contact with any walls or any car. And we are doing all right here as we now make our way down to the line and made our way into lap number 12. So. I didn't do lap number 12, we do make a little bit of contact with the wall. Very unfortunate there, but fortunately we didn't gain any damage on our car. As you can see on the bottom right, there's everything is still green as good. And uh, luckily we, you know, we, we didn't get any damage to the floor as that could have been easily a, lo a loss of downforce there if we would have made contact with the wall any harder. And now we find our way sneaked up right behind the McLaren of Ricardo right ahead of us. And uh, this is going to be a tad bit interesting here as we have a hungry Hamilton and Russell right behind us. And uh, we got to get around Ricardo here as soon as possible. But wasn't sure yet if he was going to come into the pits this lap because uh, I know that it was what the normal strategy was going to be. But we decided to uh, stretch out the gap or stretch out the stint a little bit longer than usual. We're going to try to come in on lap number 13. As I felt like we had really good pace, and uh, as we come down out of the Roscas onto the pit straight, you can see that Ricardo sneaks his way onto the inside, goes into the pits, and now here we get our pit window open, and we're gonna come into the pits this lap here as we're still getting attacked and abused from behind from Hamilton and Russell. But as we head into the swimming pool, we do gain a bit of a gap away from Hamilton and Russell, and we're able to stretch it out just a tad bit here, heading into the final time into the Roscas as we are now going to make our pit stop here come in make sure that we greet the Ferrari boys hopefully they don't screw us up here with the strategy or with the pit stop as we uh, get a good turn in waiting for the softs to go on and there we go 2.8 seconds not too shabby from the Ferrari boys and uh, coming out of the pits here we lose a few positions and we are now demoted back into P16 it's going to be a tight squeeze on the exit as we get down into P18. Almost lose the rear as we, as we get onto the throttle. Probably a tad bit too heavy. And as we work our way up onto the hill, we are now on the soft compound tires. And we're going to see what we can do here with these tires. And see if we can catch up to a stroll at Magnuson as both of them are using the medium. So heading off of the Roscas here down the straight. Making our way into lap number 15. You can see that the gap was starting to close up here as we almost make contact with Albon coming out of the pits. A very, very sketchy uh, pit exit right there as uh, we were just biting our, uh, you know, minding our business there. And uh, you can see on the top that a couple cars do go off. And according to, <laughs> according to our race engineer, there is a safety car. You guys saw that there was a bunch of of cars piled up on the left hand side coming out of the casino and we gain somehow three positions there. I think it was Lando and a couple of hostage cars that were just knocked off into the left and this is going to change everything as we are again on just two lap old soft tires everybody else is on the mediums right ahead of us and this is going to be very interesting we're trying to hear what our race engineer is trying to tell us 
Okay, so safety car is going to be in this lap here. So we, you know, advance forward up into lap number 17. So stay right behind Stroll. We're just trying to time this uh, restart as well as we can and judge it to perfection. As we come out of the final corner, we get onto the power as soon as possible. Enable ERS here as we have about 65% of battery charge. As we head our way into Sandoval, we get a really, really good launch here as we are now still right behind Stroll. You know, way up the hill here, and uh, if we can do what we did early on the race to stroll, making our way into turn number five, this can be a very, very good ov uh, overtaking opportunity as we sneak onto the inside, break as late as we can since we have the grip, force him out wide. He stays onto the left hand side as we make our way into the hairpin, break as late as we can, make sure that we can secure the position, and that is P12 taken away from stroll, and we now set our sights on Yuki. And Magnuson right ahead of us is going to be very, very interesting once we come down to the final couple of laps. So coming out of the final corner, we're just getting a little bit of wheel spin. And that is not what we need there as the gap opens up from us and Yuki. And uh, Yuki was able to just pull away just a tad bit. But as we come into turn number one, he's getting held up by the slower Magnuson in, on the medium compound tires. And that's going to be our saving grace here. If Magnuson can hold up Yuki, we can definitely get in a good position here to try to go overtake Yuki Sonoda, but we just have to find a good spot and be close enough and uh, be aggressive enough to make this happen. And once we get around Yuki, we can definitely start forcing our way to try to nip at Magnuson. And maybe, just maybe, with 20 laps in this race only, we can work our way from P20, last place, all the way up to the points in P10. number 10. So, coming out of the tunnel, which is two laps to go here, we break right before the chicane. And uh, we get a really, really great run, but just nothing could really be evolved there. As Yuki just stretches out his legs just a tad bit as we come into the pool, or the swimming pool. And as we come out of La Rascas for the time, for the second time here before the last, we are not able to get a really good run. We do get a little bit of wheel spin once again like the lap prior. And uh, now, again, the gap opens up from us and Yuki, so... Basically, we're going to have maybe one more attempt here if we can just get a really good run off the casino. And as we work our way down past the hill, past the bump, you know, way into turn number five, we just weren't close enough to try to go for that lunge and make the overtake on Sonoda. But again, we could still probably do something heading into Chicane. We just got to be close enough and abuse these softs. I mean, there's no point in saving them now. It's the final lap. We have to do everything in our power, use up all the ERS, and just see if we can get around him. As we work our way now into the chicane, break as late as we can. We get a really, really good entrance, make a very, very wide exit. And just on the power, we just could not get it down to our liking. And again, once we head back into swimming pool, you could just be able to extend the gap here, staying right behind Magnuson. As we head into La Rascas for the final time, Max Verstappen wins the race, but unfortunately we make contact with Yuki, and we accidentally destroy the front right of our wing, and that just does not give us the grip to go off of the final corner as strong as we'd like to. And as we cross down the start-finish line, it is going to be a P12, and unfortunately we were unable to get into the points position with just uh, maybe with an extra five or six laps we could have, but... At least we get driver of the day and we come home in P12. Fantastic victory for Red Bull today. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tires are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. It just looks so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently and it's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be so proud of the victory they secured here. And there you go, guys. That is the race around Monaco. Somehow we were able to survive until the end, even with full simulation damage. I gotta say, it was a very difficult challenge. But to come back from P20 all the way to P12 around this track... I have to say I was very very happy with the result but I just really wish we could have gone P10 maybe if we would have put in a 50% a race we probably could have gotten to P10 maybe even done better to be quite honest but P12 
I'll have to take it, especially with everything that happened in this race. But let me know what you guys think about this race. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button. Or if not, hit that subscribe button down below if you want to catch more content. And since you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, I really, really appreciate it. If you guys want to catch some of the live streams, you guys can hit, definitely hit that subscribe button down below. And uh, catch some of the live streams I do here weekly for the career mode. But until then, guys, hope to catch you guys on the next one. Peace.